Rambo. Ni hao. Ohio. Good morning. Let's go. that trading is risky not appropriate for everyone your past performance good or bad is not necessarily indicative of future results please stay small stay humble focus on the long term and never risk money you cannot afford to lose happy monday may 13th oh lucky may 13th awesome get from in front of me the crowd grudges me you can cut a record from side to side with the ride that glides all right I don't know what's going on. This is a total mess. Everything's a mess lately. Everything's gone cuckoo. So I missed you guys on Friday. There, the power went out. Power went out. Can you still see me here? Woo. And my PC's still a little bit messed up. Every time I boot it, different monitors. So there's something wrong with the car. It doesn't matter. I've already fired it. I already ordered a new one. They're already building it. Can't hold me down. But you pull the plug, kill the power. That really screws things up for my trading. So um, my wife, I swear to God, she's like, why don't we have a whole home generator backup system? And I'm like, yeah, good point. That's what most wives want. <laughs> no, not that you're demanding or anything. But yeah, she's right. Why don't I have a generator? We just talked about it like couple of days earlier and then boom I lost my power so anyways apologize for that so then with the swing trading group I tried to do it on Sunday and I set the webinar up and I said hey invite everybody invite all the members and I guess maybe eventually people got the email I, I don't know but it's been a real cluster uh, lately so anyways foobar so I apologize for that thank you for your patience everybody Without further ado, hey, my name is Wayne McDonald. I am the Chief FX Market Strategist for TradersWay.com. Throw your diamonds in the sky. Hmm? Throw your diamonds in the sky. Bloom, bloom. It's my heart. Bloom, 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 bloom. So thank you very much for being a client to TradersWay.com. Fast execution speed, competitive spreads. Nice carries, too. From some of the pairs, nice carries, as I've been showing you. ECN. Fixed spread, variable spread, your way, trader's way. Cool. So make sure you uh, pay it back. They make these, they make these webinars. These guys make our webinars possible. Okay. Make sure you thank them. Okay. So what are we gonna do today, huh? Go through the regular, go through the motions. Maybe squeeze in some calendar time. I have a microeconomics class, uh, final examination in the next 24 hours. Yeah, isn't that nice? Should be Jimbo. We'll have to uh, talk to Ryan about that, I guess. You guys drink your breakfast? Hmm? You like to drink your breakfast? Look what's in here. Oh, you're not going to be able to read it. It's all backwards. Oh, no. Yeah, tomatoes, carrots, celery, beets, parsley, lettuce, watercress, spinach. Yeah! Breakfast of champions. Well, the problem with these classes, Botman, is that there's so much information that it's not like we study, like, Here's what I would rather if I were to design, you know, hey, Harvard, listen to me. What I would do is I'd pick like uh, three topics up until the midterm, three topics after the midterm, and then like deep dive on them, you know, thousand different variations and, and hundreds of questions over the same type of thing. And you leave mastering. But these types of classes, they're they're everything. Right. And that's just part of like management uh, programs and stuff. So um, there's just so much. There's there's dozens of really 
interesting topics, but you're just like, you can't possibly memorize everything. You just, you just, pos you just can't. So uh, it's just, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a challenging class. And even the, the TAs are, we have like amazing TAs and they're like, yeah, this stuff's just hard. You just, it's just hard. It's, it's just intense. But anyways. <clears throat> But once again, I was up very late, uh, 11.30 or something. I must have spent, I don't know, 10, again, 10 or 12 hours of study over the weekend. So I said it last week, and I'll say it this weekend. Uh, if you're not putting that kind of effort into Forex, uh, where you're spending, even on weekends, even if it's holidays, even if you have family over, even if you have plans, even if your kids are doing things and you know, it was Mother's Day this weekend, and I still cooked dinner. I still did breakfast in bed. I still hung out with the kids. And on top of all of that and the normal life, 12 hours of study. Let me tell you, it's not easy. You got to always have your backpack, and you got to sit in cafes at 6 in the morning. You got to, uh, well, while you're at a, uh, while you're waiting, get your hair cut. While you're waiting in line, you should have your laptop open studying Forex, right? Um, that's, that's the attitude. And I think if you're going to compete in this world, if you're going to be a, uh, right. Uh, what, what's a good analogy? If you watch some online videos on how to play basketball and you want to be an NBA player, you should probably practice really hard too. Does that make sense? Is that fair? It's kind of hard to go from online videos straight to the uh, NBA, isn't it? So you're going to have to put in blood, sweat, and tears as well. So I'm just emphasizing that um, the, 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 level, the level of nonsense you're going to need to go through. Right, anyways. Uh, so make that inspirational anyways. I don't know if that sounded bitchy. Uh, make, it in, make it inspirational. Okay. I mean, just remind yourself, you want to be in the top five, right? You want to be nine, you want to beat 95% of everybody. It's not going to come easy. You, you're not going to be able to coast through it. You know what I mean? So anyways, let's go through uh, the charts. There's the, the inspiration of the day, right? Well, Mike... Uh, Mike, I'll never forget it. You guys have heard the story, but maybe not everybody. But um, I was waiting to be in, uh, interviewed um, by Bloomberg. So I had done something a year earlier called The Educated Investor. And they, uh, they interviewed a, a whole bunch of uh, you know, professionals, I being one of them. And they did it a second year. And I was the only guy they invited back, which, uh, which was interesting. Um, and they had set up a a temporary studio in, uh, it was the Marriott Marquis in Times Square. Anyway, so I was waiting there. They were interviewing and like all these types of things. They're always behind schedule. And so the producer came out and said, Hey, you know, really apologize. We might be 20 minutes behind. Um, do you mind just hanging out in the hallway? I'm like, Hey, don't worry about it. I got you covered. So anyway, some time goes by. The producer comes out to tell me, even though 20 minutes has gone by, it's going to be another 10 minutes, right? And she sees I'm sitting there, and I got my laptop open. She's like, Ooh. she uh, somehow she could see that I had my charts open. She's like, are you trading right now? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I'm trading right now. She's like, right now. I'm like, yeah, check this out. <laughs> I'm showing her. And all of a sudden, everyone's gathered around like, damn, this guy's trading. I'm like, well, what else would I do while I wait? So you got to be like that game on. Um, you know, laser focus all the time. Anyway, so let's, do, let's move on. I, I am pretty excited. I spent the big money, guys, and check that out. I can draw horizontal boxes, and I can draw lines. See, I couldn't do that before. <laughs> you have to, you have to pay. So, anyways, I, I paid. Cool. So now we got the full the full wheelhouse here, the full Monty. So um, just this is how we had it trapped. Uh, I guess it was what, Friday we were here and I trapped it here and here, right? So there's sort of like a double trap. 
Do you remember how we wanted to play it? The idea is to let it break out, right? And then go in that direction. Make sense? Cool. So we got a breakout. So you use a breakout strategy. Yeah, we'll get to oil and CAD, uh, the vessel attacks and stuff like that. Um, first of all, I think it's all nonsense and they're all doing it on purpose. <laughs> I think I think certain people want oil prices to go up. So if they can create a level of nonsense that will make that happen. Uh, no one's going to complain, right? So anyways, uh, yeah, why don't we do that now? I don't care. So the Straits of Hormuz. If you've been out there, on one side you got what? UAE and um, what is up there? Is it Qatar? And on the other side you have Iran. Check this out. <laughs> Whoa. So I don't know if I'm qualified to draw the Middle East, right? And then like Iran is something like this. And uh, oil from somewhere there. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I realize I forgot to draw entire countries. Sorry, Bahrain. Get you, get you next time. So anyway, somewhere you got Saudi Arabia and Bahrain, which is like nat gas and the UAEs in here and Qatar. Anyway, so um, there's oil that you know, I can't. I have to finish this. This kind of Iraq is in here. <laughs> it's something like that. That's so bad. Uh, sorry, everyone uh, in that part of the world. Um, so anyways, there's a bottleneck right here in the Straits of Hormuz. And so uh, oil tankers have to go through here, right? And uh, so anyways, in that vulnerable spot, and there's about three um, pinching spots like that around the world, uh, uh, some oil tankers were, I don't know, something happened. <clears throat> so that affects in some people's minds, that's going to affect um, supply. Now, two oil tankers, I think it was just, there was some sort of explosions on these things. I don't think they were like hit by missiles or something. Um, but anyways, uh, the idea is if, if um, demand, let's go back to Khan Academy here. If demand, okay, so demand is going to be constant. <clears throat> okay. Demand is going to be constant. Uh, so you have price and you have quantity. Okay. So we're going to isolate this, which means it's a short run curve. Okay. And let's do supply one like this. This is the supply one of oil. We'll call this... And, and the reason it's a it's a giant P, more importantly a giant Q. This is the entire global market. Okay, the entire global market. So if supply is threatened, like what's been happening uh, with these attacks, then supply moves to here, supply two. Right. So we go. I'll show you that this means it's less. So let me get white now. Okay. So we had, we had this quantity, okay, that's quantity one. So if oil tankers are under threat and there's some terrorist attacks or explosions or whatever, we're going to have less oil, and that's described on this chart by Q falling to Q2. Okay, Q1, and now Q2, that's a Q. Quantity is less. You can see that we have less oil. Okay, but how, what, how does that impact price, you might be thinking. 
So we do this, and we go, um, okay. We were at this price before, price one, based on Q1, and now we're at this price here. Price is now price two, and you can see price has gone up. Price has shifted up from the old equilibrium to the new equilibrium with the fall in price. So that's that's what happens in a nanosecond in the trading world. Okay. So when that happens, uh, oil prices should go up is, is the thought. When supply is under threat. Okay. So anyways, um, I heard anyways this morning that it was ridiculous. Well, it doesn't look ridiculous. Um, what what are the known knowns? Okay, what what do we know? Okay, we got this going on. Cool. And then last week it stopped falling. Why is that important? Well, we know bears would have been selling this. And because it made a uh, lower low, lower high, lower low. So where where do we know they would sell? We know they would sell in here. That's why we drew this. Okay. And for all intents and purpose, purposes, they did sell. But no follow through. They didn't sell enough. So we were trapped in here all last week. So if this was terribly bullish, you know, we should be much higher than we really are. So even though it seemed to me the new, the media outlets were freaking out this morning uh, or even last night, um, really nothing's really happened, okay? Because it comes down to uh, bulls are going to buy here, and but you wouldn't do it in a range. Uh, bears are supposed to sell here. But again, it's mediocre, and well, I look at this and like still nothing's really happened. But based on the laws of supply and demand and the current uh, geopolitical risk, if you want, um, people are probably thinking this, but even that's not even a big deal. It doesn't even get it as a higher high, right? So I look at it as a big map, okay? The giant big map. Okay, really not that not that interesting. So someone says, well, how does that impact CAD? Well, you would stink that uh, higher oil prices would help CAD, but we don't even have higher oil prices. So you you might see it in Brent, and Brent is closer to uh, what is it, seventy five and a half. Okay, that doesn't look like a market freak out to me, but what if you happen to be a bull? Now ask yourself, is it possible that there are people that are simply bulls? Wait, I'm trying to teach you how to do that, right? So what would a bull do on oil? Well, they would buy it here. Didn't work out. I know, right? So sad. Now, on a monthly basis, they would buy it here, right? Cool. And then on a weekly basis, they would buy it uh, here, right? Yeah. Actually, no, I didn't. That one's not right. Uh... So now what? Um... Maybe this, but even that, I mean, we haven't even cleared resistance. So it makes me wonder, like, the media was freaking out, and I don't really see much reason for it. But if you're a bull, you got to set up your next plan, right? This doesn't look like a breakout to me. So if bears are going to sell, they're going to take it down here, and then it's going to come here, and it's going to come there. And remember, we move sideways forever and ever and ever. Okay? That's the logic here. We move sideways forever and ever and ever and ever until it breaks. 
Okay, and then if or when it breaks, let's say it does break up here, then this is the real plan. Or if it breaks down, then this is the real plan. So let it break. What do you care, right? And of course, you know it's just going to get us to this part. So we're almost talking next week, which means if we're talking next week, it's probably uh, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, right? Later in the week. Because you can't trade it next week unless you've set it up this week. And would it happen early in the week? Mm, no, so not, not today or not tomorrow. So maybe Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? And I'm trying to think in a sort of a linear fashion. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, cool. So you got 150 pips on my idea. Right on. On the pissy. Right on. That seems worthy of a bottle of wine or cigars. I know the green down in Africa. I saw the wing in South Africa. His trades are better than a hundred men a more could ever do. All right. Uh, okay, let's do gold, I guess, huh? Same thing. Now, I want to point out the importance of this. We talked about it here. That the market, not just this market, but other markets, uh, we're in a place where it was basically giving us the cold shoulder, right? Right? So we knew to tighten up our um, aggressiveness in here. Remember? after a failure to make a lower low there. Because look, I would sell this all day every day, and but I would expect a lower low. So once it starts to go up here, um, then we, we lose the trend and it becomes range. And now the idea is we're gonna stay in the range forever and ever and ever. It will never break out, ever, ever break out until it does. But we change our attitude, right? And you, you understand the importance of having the right perception of, of market conditions, how important that is on the long run. And that we knew here to stop selling. And then we knew here that this is as far as we could possibly expect. And now we expect it to come back down here. And then later this week, we'd expect it to go back here. And then next week, we'd expect it to come back here. And it's just the proper, right? But to know that quickly and adjust your expectations and, of course, adjust your trade plans accordingly, um, I think is astute observation, right? So what do I think about before breakout? Sell it resistance by its support, sell it resistance by its support, sell it resistance by its support, or walk away, walk away, walk away. One of the two. But the attitude is really, the, the real attitude is let it break. What do I care? And when it breaks, now I know what to do. You know, so that last attitude is like, look, I can see the apple. It put its way up there. I don't have a ladder. If I climb up the tree, I could fall down or hurt myself. So I'm best off just sitting here waiting for the apple to fall. And it will fall. It might not be today or tomorrow. It might not even be this week. But it'll fall, and I'll catch it, and I'll eat it. 
So, like, if you were to describe the attitude, like, in game theory, oh, let's make this dark. It's hard to see. Um, okay, like, if you're doing game theory, you guys study game theory? Like I said, it's a fascinating subject. Uh, game, I don't, I don't want to go through this. I probably shouldn't do this. Uh, Jenny and Kevin. So in game theory, a simple game is like you look at the potential playoffs. If, if Jenny plays A, what should Kevin do, right? And so now you got payoffs. I'll just make up random numbers. Um, okay. So typically when you do a game, you're, you're anticipating that the other person is thinking about your move. And at the same time, you're anticipating the other player's move. And so you'll very quickly make some pretty logical decisions. That's, and that's the, that's the cool thing about uh, game theory is like, oh, well, it, the payoff here, if they expect, if Jane expects Kevin to play A, right, then if he plays A, he'll get four points, let's say. But if he plays B, he'll get nothing. So he's going to play that all day, every day. Right? But if uh, Jane thinks Kevin's going to play B, well, now what? Does she want to play B too? Well, no, she'll get zero. But if she plays, uh, or I mean, if she plays A and he plays B, he gets zero. So if, if she plays B and he plays B, She'll get three. It's not as good, but she'll play it, right? And then, of course, this uh, Kevin does the same thing, like, uh, 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 right? And uh, 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 and you have two Nash equilibriums. Now, that's a rational person, right? But there's also a, a, a max a min strategy. But there, that's a, that's a um, an irrational player trying to get the best of the worst. So they're risk averse, right? They're risk averse. Uh, so what I'm saying here is my strategy in this scenario on the long run could just be risk averse, not aggressive. So yes, you could you could sell here, but you're only getting this much. And the, Or if you could buy it here, you can get this much. But we also know it's going to break. So if it was Russian roulette, right? Think of it that way. You're probably okay selling this, but there is a bullet in the chamber. So the the you know the the risk averse sort of irrational. I guess you could argue it's irrational. It's like it's it's not the best payoff, so to speak. It's the most conservative payoff. The most conservative risk averse payoff would be um, would be to do nothing, ignore all of this until. You get a break, and now you have a new trade plan of buy the dip. Or, right, because remember, your strategy is going to be based on the other person. In this case, the other person is the aggregate of everybody else. We call that the market. So if everyone else breaks this to the downside, then you're going to sell the next rally. If, if everyone buys it, you're, you'll buy the next dip. Okay? And so you go back to a... a a decision making process so you're you're doing a max min strategy in here and then doing a more of a rational tit for tat up in here <clears throat> based on not just probabilities but risks and more interesting what the other player does so how the market behaves should impact what you do how many people agree with that that how the market is behaving should dictate your strategy versus you trying to outsmart the market. There's there's a subtle difference between the two, right? So your job should be figuring out <clears throat> everyone else's moves and then make your strategy. 
for the for the optimum highest payoff. And most of the time, you'll get that sort of Nash equilibrium, as I showed you. If everyone's going up, well, eventually you're going to buy, and everyone agrees. Okay. Okay. Now, what will really blow your mind is to start busting out the math and the probabilities. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So anyways, you have to decide how, how do you behave here. There's lots of ways you can behave here. That's your strategic decision. Okay. There is no bias, though. Okay, so Joshua says, how does your bias? Well, there's no market if we're moving sideways. Okay, so that's one thing. I should have done that in two colors. But if the market's moving sideways, there's no market. If that, if, I should say it differently, if price is moving sideways, there's no, there's no market. It's not a bullish market. It's not a bearish market. So it's neutral, and you might be, let's say, a bear. You sold earlier, you, you sold this, and you were down here, and you sold that. Okay, so you sold here, you sold here, and you sold earlier. Cool. So what if then, um, so Joshua, so if it does this, are you going to be happy? No. Not until you sell here. Okay, you will sell there. Right, you will sell there. We know that. That's no. There's no doubt there. Um, but you're not going to buy it here, and you're not going to buy it here, and you didn't buy it here if you were trading your bias. Okay. Now, what I said when we're in here is that you can go like in scalping mode. You can go in spot mode, and and I think I dropped into a daily chart, and like you could you can play around with this, but it's 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 not the game of kings, right? A random dude says, I always enjoy watching. Hey, I know you woke up and were wondering, you know, hey, how do I play the Nash equilibrium if I'm risk averse? <laughs> okay. But the key component of that uh, maximum minimum thing is you're, that person doesn't care what the rest of the market does. And I'm suggesting you should. You should care what the rest of the market does. Okay. But, uh, okay, anyways, whatever. So there you go. So if you're a bear, this is, you know, it's not too complicated. Okay. But it's easy, right? What happens for most of you guys is you're looking at this on a 15 minute chart and you have no idea where it's going nor do you have an idea what you actually want to do. So you're in, you're in here on your 15-minute chart, and you're looking at it, and you're asking it to tell you what to do. If you don't have the answers, you don't know what's going on. And if you don't know what's going on, you don't have a trade plan, you haven't done analysis. And if you haven't done an analysis and you don't have a trade plan, you've already failed. It's just a matter of time. You will lose all your money. Why? Because you don't deserve it. Think about it, right? If you don't know plumbing, don't be a plumber. If, how about this? Even better. Why don't you become an amateur electrician? Don't take any classes. God forbid, don't take any classes. Oh my God. Just like you can get an LLC, you get some nice business cards, a nice little logo, put some stickers on the side of your truck, and go figure it out. Hey, what does this wire do? Oh, Nash Equilibrium? Okay, Mike. All right. So anyways, uh, this should be very straightforward if you have a trade plan and you're a bear. If you're a bull, and, and of course... We talked about this a week and, and even two weeks ago. But uh, you can be short-term long, but it's still technically long-term short. Uh, if you were going to be a bull, you can buy here. And I think I said this is where you take profit. 
and then if it turns bullish, you'll have you'll most likely have an opportunity to re-enter here. So you make your, this one's kind of more of like a, a small scalp or something, and then you buy it in here on the next move, and then there's even another one next month, so and so forth. Okay. I'm also thinking about seasonality and right. So these are in, in play. I, I don't know how much they come in play for you, but I know June 15th is, is really the end of the year. I kind of look at it that way. June 15th is the end of the year, whatever that fed meeting is. It's always around the 15th. Let's say it's the June 20th. Okay. That's the end of the year. The cool thing is that's when I pack up my stuff and I go to Harvard. Um, so somewhere between now and then, or let's say by then, we're going to lose volume and volatility. We're going to lose trend. So I start thinking about, uh, let's say gold turns bullish. Let's say this is the bottom um, of the year. Let's say this is the bottom of 2019. Okay. That would be my uh, plan, let's say. Uh, if that's true, then the rest of May will produce a higher high at some point, and that would make me a buyer here. See how suddenly planning makes things so much easier? If I'm playing a double bottom, okay, then I'm going to wait for it to come up here. I'm going to treat that like a breakout, and this is my weekly strategy. Super simple if you have a bias. It's a basic swing. Like, OMG, that, that's just a... Basic swing. Cool. And so we go this way. Okay. And now we go higher and we end May higher. What's going to happen in June? Well, it will need a dip. And then what? Is it going to make a higher high in July? I, 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 I wouldn't be able to tell you. I don't think so. So to add more time now to this analysis, we're looking at a day chart. So we're expecting maybe a, maybe a higher high in June. Maybe, right? So what are we looking at here? There's our double bottom. So we buy a dip here that gets us up. Um, well, we, we, we have the possibility of heading this high in May. There's only two weeks left. Are we going to get that high? I'm going to go conservative and say no. So now i got to kill this stuff. Okay, and say, well, if not there, then here. It's an old price action thing, but it's a monthly R. Okay, so that I'm going to guess, a conservative guess, if we're going higher, it does something like this. And then we, when we get into June, let's say there's a pullback. Okay, this will pull everything up, and we instead get that. And we get stuck basically in this friend zone uh, until September. Or something to that effect. Mm, you know, just the, the biggest point uh, is that we, we do this eventually. So we got to get to the top of the range to define the top of the range and then sort of have a really good start in June and then a pullback in, in, in around the Fed meeting and then the giant's sucking sound of, of a vacuum of vol volume and volatility. Now, we just have to trade change trading strategies to make money, which isn't a big deal. Mmm, tomatoes and celery, watercress, spinach. Mmm. Ah. ah. I preach to teach, because some of you never had this. Number one, born without a gun. I wasn't licensed to have one. 
The minute you see me, fear me. I am the epitome, a public enemy. Used abuse without clues. I refuse to blow a fuse. They even have me on the news. Don't. Don't, don't, don't believe the hype. Don't believe the hype. Yeah. Going 1991 on you. Sorry, I just couldn't help it. All that energy. Yeah, there's always haters, though, right? Not haters, but criticizers. I get people like say this. They're like, yeah, but there's a lot of salt. Yeah, well, you eat sugar and starch for breakfast. I have vegetables, and you're criticizing me? Sugar, starch, fat. That's what people eat. Corn with sugar and milk. Bread, jelly, whatever, right? And then the other one is I eat a lot of cottage cheese. I, I eat blueberries, blackberries, and raspberries mixed with cottage cheese. Cottage cheese can be fattening. My like, dude, seriously, my doctor's going to get on me because I eat too much cottage cheese. That's the problem. Dude, you'd be so healthy if you just ate less cottage cheese. Really? That's the feedback. So there's always criticizers. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not fat because I eat a lot of cottage cheese. I'm fat because I drink a lot of booze. And I don't exercise. That's my fat reason. All right. So what do you want to do here? Are we up or are we down? Okay. Once again, it's a pretty simple decision. You make one. Okay. So if we were trending, uh, we would have stayed below this. Whoop. Okay, this was plan A, if you remember, for, for selling. We'll call it A. Okay, what was plan B? Well, typically, it's this. Okay, so it's simply, are you a bull or a bear? Okay, what about bulls? Well, yeah, well, there's a double bottom. I get it on a weekly basis. It's not good on a monthly basis. And then this kind of looks like monthly, which means that was an all right sell last week. So if you did that last week, then you were a, a, a buyer sort of in this area, right? So you bought a dip on the open and your targets here. But you got something in your in your way, right? So a bull has it planned out like this, right? And you should probably make a parallel there. Do you want to pitchfork it or channel it? Well, you could do equidistant, for example. Is that right there? Yeah. Okay. And you can say, uh, I'm a bull, therefore that's where we're going. And that makes a lot of sense. So I love leaving myself notes like this to just keep me focused. Remember, you're supposed to be the one with answers, not the, not the charts, not the market, right, in that case. Um, you should be the one that says, okay, I'm trying to be a bull. So you bought it in here, and then you bought it in here. Cool. And this was a buy. That was cool. You got it on the open. And what are, what are your expectations? Well, your expectations now, let's do it this way. Uh, uh, see, it's not perfect. It's not supposed to be perfect. It's supposed to be a guide, right? That would be your trade plan, right? Some up this week, some down this week. Some up next week, some down next week. Yeah, well, it wasn't alcoholics per se. Uh, it was um, heavy drinkers.
JL says fats are brain food. Well, I feed, so this morning I've had, um, I've had two, oops, I've had two energy drinks, each with two servings. So I've had four servings. of like B3, B6, B12, and, and a bunch of other things. But lots of B vitamins. B, 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 B vitamins. Okay? Why do I want B? B vitamins help you carry more oxygen. And who lives on oxygen? Your brain. So my blood is carrying more oxygen than normal. And I've been doing that for 20 years or something. So I jack myself up with that stuff so I can carry more oxygen in my blood. And oxygen is brain food. And yeah, I know some some fatty acids and stuff in there are pretty good too. Uh, but really, I like to carry as much oxygen with me as possible. Okay. Cool. So, anyways, what do you think? That's what it's suggesting if you're a bull. Now, what if you're a bear on this? Well, you still have permission here, right? So you're going to play, you're going to have it planned out the same way as the bulls have it planned out, but you're going to sell it here, and your expectation now would be sort of like this. Okay. Nitrogen, yeah, I think that's better for your heart, though, isn't it? Sell the triple top. Uh, well, first of all, I don't know where you're looking. There, there wouldn't be a triple top in this situation, but I think you're talking about something like this. Remember, you got to be careful. Um, it's just resistance. A triple top exists in a trend. Okay? Not in... right um there's no trend okay the big difference is that's what's happening here versus this there's a big difference okay we're not reversing anything it's only resistance now i know there's a very subtle difference i i get nitpicky in language for a lot of reasons one we're trying to master our domain and be professionals right but we also we're from different countries and different cultures and speak different languages and stuff so we can't have 95 different ways amongst us as a community to discuss what we see so when you say triple top i think reversal but if we're in a range i just explained we're not going to reverse we're going to stay in the range forever and that i mean we know that's not true but it does help me determine how I behave today. Right? There's a difference. If, if we were reversing, it's like worthy of climbing up a ladder, or climbing the tree. If it, you know, um, versus sideways, I'll just sit on the ground and I'll wait and the apple will come to me. I have gravity on my side in that sense, right? So make sure you're trading your bias. Make sure you're setting up your trade plans. Okay. Okay. What do we do in this situation? Get out. 
Yeah. Run. Uh huh. Yeah. Get out. What do I do today? Well, you get out. Well, I'm not in. Well, then don't trade. See? Nice. That's an out. Not an in. Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, and ever Mike. Forever and ever and ever and ever. Until it breaks. Okay. You have to realize, Mike, people get antsy and they also probably have a lot of bad advice from a lot of other, you know, traders, let's say. And uh, they get antsy and they start trading breaks and stuff and uh, anticipating breaks. And I'm trying to tell you to not anticipate a break. Just let it break. Okay. See, one of the things is if you have a long-term business plan, I mean a three-year business plan, and I've told you to do this countless times, but if you have a three-year business plan, you are liberated from this, um, this pressure of having to trade. Uh, don't go on vacation, JL. You have to make money. Unless you're that rich, you're like, I don't need to make money. Because you're not earning a salary. You don't get paid vacation, right? So, no, you got to make money. All right, what the heck was I talking about? Uh, shoot. Oh, long-term business plan. If you don't have that, you feel this pressure you need to be trading and you need to be making money at all times. And eventually this pressure will make you bad trades. Be uh, you'll get into bad trades because you feel the pressure to trade. But remember, your job isn't to trade. Your job is to profit. And you'll know this if you have a long-term business plan. The secret to your success is not making lots of money. The secret to success is consistency. Okay. And even though it's unstable, the most consistent thing is not trading at all, right? As you're, you're consistently doing nothing. Now it's unstable because you have built in costs like you need to eat and you need to grow your account and taxes or whatever. Uh, so you're going to need to trade, but you, your focus shouldn't be on, I got to trade, I got to trade. This is going to break out because you're talking yourself into a trade and then you're going to say, Oh, this is going to break out. And now you start gambling. And you're, you're entering trades that are based on a, a very poor premise and even attitude. But if you knew as long as you average, your boring, basic, stupid little average over a long period of time, you're going to hit your goals. It's not hard. If you have a long-term view and sort of, are more focused on consistency and compound interest than than lot size and and, and you know, um, then you're like liberated. You're like, you know what? I can just let this break. It might take a couple of days. I'll come back and I'll catch the breakout. Done. Consistent now. You see what I mean? So you're not. It's not like you're not trading at all. You're not making that trade until it breaks. Now you're in control and you're like, I'll come back in a day or two or maybe next week. And you'll buy the dip. Add a good pivot, add a good support zone, and it'll take off, and you'll make money. And you're like, yeah, well, that's 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 what it's supposed to do. You see what I mean? Yes. Exit a bad trade using price action. If you're long and it makes a lower low, you fail. Get out. Don't worry about it. Right on. Thank you. This is this is some great video. Right on. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, and, and don't don't forget game theory. You're gonna have to Google Nash Equilibrium. Why don't you you can watch uh, a beautiful mind?
right? That's uh, that's John Nash. Ugh. Okay, but you you understand, guys? That that is the key where you're like, I will let it break. It won't be today or tomorrow, but it will break. And, I, and I'll be there, and I'll catch the pullback. Done. You're in control. You're consistent. And on the long run, your, your, your trades are going to be very mediocre, but very consistent because you have very little risk. So why would you have amazing trades? You're going to have, like, mediocre trades, just lots of them. Most of your trades are going to be mediocre. They're going to produce what one would expect because you're getting out at the proper places like resistance. But your winners are way bigger than your losers, and you have more winners than your losers. So everything's fine. Everything's fine. And you grow your big – you get to the big money slowly over time, like a normal, regular business. Okay? You understand? Your trading should be like any other normal business. If you're trying to get rich quick, you're a child. So grow up. Look at this as a real business, as a regular business. It will take time, but you need plans, you need focus, you need hard work, you need discipline. It will take sacrifice, but over, slowly over time, your account size will grow bigger and bigger and bigger, and you'll earn more and more money. And 10, 15, 20 years from now, shoot, you retire if you want, but you won't want it. Why would you? Okay, see, that's where I'm trying to get you. A man of many talents spent six hours back testing breakout strategy plans. Great. Sweet. Nice. Love to hear it. I spent six hours yesterday, probably more than that, but certainly six hours yesterday doing microeconomics. I hate microeconomics. So you have to do things like, all right, here's the market. So we know our market. I just did the market for oil. There's the market equilibrium price. But what if you're now a company and that now in a competitive market? And now that's your. And you got all these other curves, right? And you're like, oh, there's the quantity you're going to produce and all this crap and. Uh, your marginal cost and your total cost and your average cost and oh my god and and if it changes how does it, how many units like I hate that kind of stuff hate it I'm gonna choke I choke on it oh but what if it's an oligopoly oh my god we're not gonna go through that now are we you know. I, I'm a macro guy, man. I care about the big the big picture, not what some t-shirt manufacturer. How many t-shirts should he make? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I tried to get out of it. I tried to get out of the class. And so I took a, I took a ridiculously difficult advanced macro class, and it was so freaking hard. Um, I'd have to take it again and still it was so much uh, it was fascinating but, but let's just put it this way when you sign up for a very different a difficult class at Harvard it turns out that it's freaking difficult um, the other thing I learned about that because um, that was really a tough class in my opinion anyways um, and I'm an A student. I got my ass whooped. And I have 20 years of experience in macroeconomics. I got my ass whooped. Like, it was bad. Um, people are getting like 40 and 50% on their midterm examinations. Right? However, there was probably three kids, maybe four kids, that did it like it was child's play. And I have a feeling like Harvard does something with these kids, right? 
they make the class so difficult and everyone's like fail 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 you, all you guys are normal you suck normal people suck so i'm in i'm in i'm this guy right here i'm sucking i'm suck i'm just a different degree of average and then there's like this guy ching 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 these three guys it's not even a challenge for them I, they probably didn't even study i i don't know and then I think what they do is they get moved out of Harvard and they get put into a secret government government program because they find these guys, right? They find these guys. They're like, there, there's one. Get that guy right there. Bring him to my office right now. Sir, yes, sir. Right? So anyways, it's really funny. I got my ass whipped. And so because of that, uh, uh, they punished me by making me do micro. Oh my god, no! So I'm stuck in micro. Anyways, mm, mm, mm. what do you want to do? We did this last week. I was pretty detailed on this one. Do we want to keep doing that? I don't know. Um, right. At some point, you're going to have to say, "Well, we ain't going anywhere." And you notice how how clear it is, right? You take this bottom, and you take uh, take this bottom, and then this wick, right? See? There. Uh, JL, there's no fraternities at Harvard. I was trying to explain that to my kids, too. Uh, they were at a robotics tournament because um, they have three years now of robotics training. Uh, yeah, I know, right? We, we, my kids were doing robotics in fourth and fifth grade. Uh, anyways, uh, so with, they've been to many, many universities, and uh, they, were, they saw, like, uh, fraternity floats and stuff left over after parties. I tried to explain to them, you know, the Greek system, and I'm like, but Harvard doesn't have it. <clears throat> All right. So I look at this, and you know, Mark, I, I, I'm neutral on, on this time frame. I'm neutral. Okay. So. You can change your time. In this case, I'm not talking about time for hour. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at through a different lens. So what, hap what happens if you're looking through a microscope, but you're trying to see the horizon, right? Uh, you have to change your lens. At least binoculars would be better than a microscope, right? So you could do something like, uh, like this. It's the same four hour chart. Okay. Does this impact your point of view? Well, if you're a bull, it would. And why is that? Oh, well, you, you would have bought it there. Simple. Would have taken you uh, six and a half seconds to plan your week. And if you're not doing that, you're not doing your job right. Cool. <laughs> By the way, I'm talking to my programmer about the training wheels. He says it can be done. He's gone now. Uh, he says it can be done, so I, there might be something I could release while I'm at summer school or something. If you guys want that training wheel program. We'll be, uh, so we're done that and do a couple swissy pairs and call it a day, maybe. Oh! Snap! Yeah. 
sucks, right? But the only thing I have to say here is um, counter trend. Counter trend. So uh, there's nothing there and nothing. There. Um, but they would all sort of at some point behave the similar fashion. So if you've completed the swing training course, you know that that is a potential um, counter trend setup. Okay. That's all I have to say about Viat. You should know that. You, and you should just know that. Um, this is a, um, a walk away. Hang on. Okay. So you can see we had it coming down. Okay. By the way, I think I did this so long ago. I did it when we were still down here. That's NFP, isn't it? Oh. Ooh. So anyways, um, you should be done. You're done. You're done. Walk away, dude. No, this was NFP. Uh, no, that was NFP. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you, you should be out. You're not in this trade anymore. So you don't care. Oh, but Wayne is following the... Yeah. Right. Oh, but Wayne, but Wayne, but, 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 but. okay. Well, you're you're not swing trading it, anyways. If you're still in it, you're not trading properly. Uh, but you can continue trading it. You're just not swing trading it, not on a monthly basis, anyways. Right. So maybe let's work on that. Um, you could then say. Yeah, you could trade it like that, right? So how many people have heard me say that you have to be at your charts ready to trade Sunday afternoon, 5 p.m. New York time? And then how many people last week heard me say, if you can't see it on Thursday, you're not going to trade it on Monday? Because, of course, on Monday, you're trying to figure out what to do. But you should already know what to do on Thursday, but not on Thursday for Monday. Is any of this sinking through yet, guys? So here's Thursday. Oops, let me fatten this up. Okay. On Thursday, I said, if you can't see it today, you're not going to trade it on Monday. Well, there's Thursday. Here's Monday. Boom. Gone. Snap. It's gone. If you were bare, that is definitely, unequivocally, plan A. You're like, well, Wayne, how would I possibly know to be a bear in advance? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> right? How many pairs do I typically, I like, I like dollar pair, yen pair, and Swissy pairs. And then there are some crosses depending on if, uh, if it's a carry trade. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a carry trade. So that wouldn't be normal. Okay. But let's see, how do I know to be a bear? Well, low or low. get used to this tool I guess I gotta do this now lower low drag it across and lower low drag it across lower low drag it across okay not a problem very basic price action 
you can learn this in just a few hours in the in the swing in the uh, price action course. Um, not a big deal, but if you don't know how to do it, you're not going to be successful, right? So all these little things. Check it out. You ready? Wait for it. That's a Monday. That's a Monday. That's a Monday. That's a Monday. So I've been telling you, if you don't know, if you're not planning it on Thursday, you're not going to be able to catch it because you're not ready. That's a Thursday. That's a Thursday. Uh, well, that was a Friday, but that was non-farm payrolls, right? And that was a Thursday. So if you're not planning ahead, you're falling behind. That's it. I'm not a drug guy, man. I don't I don't do drugs. So I guess that's it. You know what? I, I feel done. I haven't slept much. I've only slept, I went to, let's say, basically midnight. Now. So yeah, six hours. Um, but I have a I have a final exam. Uh, I, I Really, I think I'm taking it tomorrow morning. I, I have a 24-hour window to take it. So I'm going to study like a madman, stuff like that. And I'm going to prepare and write things down and think about things from a different point of view. Um, so I'm going to, it's not even study. I'm more like preparing for battle, sharpening my sword and repairing my, my shield. Huh? I wore the cufflinks for you this morning. Huh? Appreciate you guys. Huh? So, uh, I guess I will see you tomorrow. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I probably won't. I think I'll take it after tomorrow's webinar. I think I can. I have to double, triple check everything. But uh, my, my goal, like I said, today I'm going to uh, prepare and organize and clean my desk and all that kind of stuff and, and just change the way I'm thinking about things instead of studying and preparing and get lots of sleep, drink lots of water today and all that kind of stuff. It's not an easy subject. Like I said, um, it's just so much material that, um, let's say, put it this way, I think there's going to be 80 questions and probably two questions per subject. So there's like 40 different topics to know so well that no matter how they phrase it, or what kind of thing they give you, what angle of attack it is, because they could write everything backwards the way that it was taught. And, and you have, I think, one minute and 15, 15 seconds. So you have about one minute per question, a little more than one minute per question. It's going to take you, sometimes it takes 30 seconds to read the question, and you have to be able to say, oh, well, what they're trying to get at is this, this, and this, and you use this formula, and da, 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 oh, elasticity of demand in this case for blah, 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 da, 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 next. But, dude, even if I was the professor, I'm not that fast. I'm not a fast test taker. I'm not a fast studier. I'm not a fast reader. I'm not fast, man. So to know that level of detail for 40 subjects that you can like answer any question, just pull up the mathematical formula and then do the algebra too. Oh my God. Even the algebra sometimes is tough. Um, so no, I'm not that. No, no, I'm smart, but that that's, it's a tough exam. I'm telling you, it's not an easy class. That's a lot. And of course I have another class, which is statistics. And so to be able to like, look at something and calculate the standard deviation of it and do, you know, <laughs> uh, the chi, chi squared testings of the difference of means and just like, <laughs> it's, you know, it's heavy shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Chaos theory. Uh, yeah, that's fine. And then like the game theory and stuff. I know all that. The, the game theory is not difficult, um, but there are lots of things that, you know, are, 
are, are tricky. And very often the way they ask a question about like, let's say the, the price uh, elasticity of demand and stuff um, can be complicated to think about it. And then you need certain variables to calculate it. And then you realize they only, you have to use different variables to calculate to make calculations to get the variables you need to answer the equation that they're asking. And you got to do all of this in one minute and 12 seconds. Um, good luck, bro. Especially if it takes you 30 seconds to read it. I often have to read it twice and then think about it. What are they asking? You know, dude, a minute's gone by and I haven't even looked at the answers yet, but that's me. So um, life stuff. What can I say? Boo -hoo, boo -hoo. Right. But anyways, so got to go, yo. Hey, thank you for your patience uh, with me. Uh, Friday was tough. I got a, a right in the middle of our webinar. Boom, all the power went out for a, a quite a long time. Georgia gets a lot of storms this time of year. Um, then there was a major cluster um, on um, Sunday. I don't know why people didn't get the, um, the invitations on time, but anyways, apologize. So I'm doing my best. I'm hanging in there. This is a tough week. And then I'm free to do what I want next week, man. Next week, I'm free. I'm going to go to Daytona Beach. I'm going to party. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to get, like, nipple rings. I'm going to get a tattoo around my belly button. Yeah! Yeah! Or maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. But, uh... That's what kids do these days, I guess. I don't know. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for being on my team. Thank you for your patience. Thank you to Traders Way for making this happen. Thank you to Forex.today for hosting us. And uh, if you got if uh, if you got the time, there's 4,000 videos on YouTube. Make sure you uh, watch each one, like each one, comment on each one, and don't forget to subscribe. Cheers.